So now we have to prepare this piece of uh, kiln pine uh, to mount it on the CSC router. So I want to drill four holes in the corners because the tool isn't going to machine on the corner. It's going to just come in uh, down here and start machining back and forth. Um, however, I do have to leave this corner clear because that's where I want to zero the tool. So we'll just mark it out. To enable me to line this up nice and square on the bed of the CNC machine, uh, it needs to be square onto this piece of material so I can, so if I know everything's all nice and square on here, it's easier for me to line it up on the CNC router. And to stop me splitting the wood like that, I'm putting some little washers, uh, little flat washers on each um, screw to prevent the, the head chiseling its way in and splitting the wood. piece of material now clamped to the bed and the machine is in the home position. I actually put the machine in the home position um, every time after I've used it and um, switch the machine off there. Um, now the very important thing here, before you switch your machine on, you must have NC Studio or Mac 3 up and running and connected to the machine and then you turn the machine off. Now to set the uh, X and Y coordinates to the material here what I do is I put a very pointy tool in there and um, jog it across and zero, zero off my uh, X Y coordinates position start of the program there or the so this position here is our work offset or our orientation of our x y and z coordinate so we'll do the x and x and y coordinate first okay i'm using a new tool uh I suppose to you guys, this is a radio controlled um, pendant uh, which I'm going to use now to zero onto uh, here. So we set it on X here and and you can make it roll faster by winding the, the, the pendant wheel faster. It goes slow, it goes slow, or increments. It's very controllable. So what, what I've actually done now, um, if I can swing the camera around. In the jog window here, I've selected a 0 0.1 millimeter per pulse of this, uh, so it's very controllable. Um, if you put it up on the normal jog up here, and then you wind the handle, then you have full, uh, full speed jog. Okay, zero in the Z is a very simple process. You just get a bit of paper and stick under the tool on top of the material. And take the tool down. It's very easy to do with the pendant too. 
So all you do is catch out of the piece of paper and just move it and you just bring the bring the tool down so it just traps it. It's just touching it. One more, that's it. So now that tool is directly on the top of the material there within a thousandth of an inch. And now we just where are X, Y, Z. And there again with this pendant as well, you have, this is the machine home position and this is the work offset that we have just set. So you have it on the pendant as well as on the program. So now it's time to put our first G-code file in. So you come to this top corner here where it says file, open and load. Now, let's see, I'll find my storage device. Where is it? There. And we want to open all the files. And there they are there. So we want cut number one, which is a six mil ball mill, which is what we have in there. So we double click on that. And the G-code's in. Now to get out of the G-code window here, and incidentally you can modify it here, if you wish. Um, so here we go, I, I always run in the jog window mode. And then again, this um, SE Studio will prompt you uh, of what you can do. Like it says here, if you want, um, if, you, if you want rapid jog, you, you press the CTRL key on the keyboard uh, where it, it differs there with Mac 3 Mac 3 is a shift button so okay so we'll run this first cut but to run this first cut what I always do um, this slider here operates is the the actual feed in percentage so we're going to bring it the percentage down to about 20 23 percent that, that'll be okay very controllable and um, we'll be able to and, until it starts to cut and you know I know everything's running okay then I'll knock the, the feed rate up and this one here this slider here is the uh, RPM of the spindle my spindle isn't connected isn't controlled by the, the program I do that with the VFD control on the side of the machine Right, I just want to give you some idea of the noise that the machine makes. It's very, re really, very low level. And this is the 8mm ball mill actually cut in the wood. So we'll just walk through. And there's the machine there cutting the wood. And I can hold the conversation with you fairly easily. A rule here so you can um, <clears throat> you can tell this is in real time uh, and it's actually cutting about one inch a second uh, what you've got to take into consideration is that measurement of one inch a second is taken up 
not only in the X plane, but also in the Z plane. So if you total up the distance traveled in X and the distance traveled in the Z as well, you notice it slows down when it's going up. It all averages out about an, about an inch a second of cutting speed or 25.4 millimeters of cutting speed per second. And you can see it's given a very, very good representation. Um, they all leave a little bit of fur in, which uh, actually rubs off pretty easy. Uh, but when I put the 1.5 mil ball mill in, it seems to take a lot of that away. And uh, there again, the question of how loud or how noisy is this machine? Well, there it is cutting and I'm stood next to the camera and you're having no problem hearing me. There again, um, I'm stood, what, three meters from the machine, it's cutting with a three millimeter ball mill, and it's relatively quiet. Um, actually this this carving is as it comes off that machine um, if you take the time and uh, mm. cut it with a 1.5 mil bore mill and get the speed and feeds right now you'll get that with um, I suppose experience um, but I've given you a rough guide um, when I put this together in ATCAM. Um, Aspire will do the same. Um, I think VCAV Pro will do it as well. 
So there's, there's quite a few programs out there that will do this type of thing. Um, but you can make a very, very good product that requires very little finishing. I mean, all I've done is I've just got a like a scalpel knife and cut a very, very thin amount off and uh, just gone around it with a bit of paper. And really, that's all I've done to it. And, uh, and really and truly, um, hue and pine, you don't have to treat it with anything at all. Uh, like I say, this piece is 50 years old, as in it was cut and made into a plank 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it hasn't uh, discoloured much or anything. You saw the raw piece. Um, so I, I think I, you could put a bit of linseed oil on it, but I think it's just nice as it is because Hume Pine has a very, very special smell to it. And you put this in your room and you can smell it in your room. Uh, and it's um, to a Everybody that I know, hue and pine, the, 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 the aroma of hue and pine is a very nice. And um, so why coat it with something and seal that? So there you go. That's another project done. I hope this has um, been very helpful to you, these series of two uh, videos to make this. And... Um, I hope you press like, subscribe to my channel, share the video to your friends, and um, the red box down there as always, that will take you to my YouTube channel, uh, where there's now, uh, this is 154 videos, and um, you know, CNC routers, what you can do with them, 3D, 2D, the programs, uh, that operate them, uh, Mac 3, NC Studio, uh, the programs that you can put things together, work together in. And, well, I think it's over for another, another day. So, I hope you've enjoyed yourself today, and um, pop in to see me another day. So, bye for now.